on day one, I spawned in as a baby yeti. I was on a super tall mountain peak with my hut behind me. Whoa, this mountain is huge. There was a heavy blizzard. It seemed to stretch on for miles and miles. It looks like it's snowing in every biome. Sick. Before I could check out my hut, I was attacked by a group of polar bears. Luckily, as a yeti, I had ice-based powers. I began to use them the best I could to fight off the bears. Bet you didn't expect that. As a baby though, I only had five hearts. I needed to be cautious. Luckily, I had defeated almost all of them. I continued fighting and finished off the rest of the pack. That's why you don't mess with a yeti. After my fight, I heard talking in the distance. I decided to investigate, finding a giant monster talking to some snow wizard. <laughs> the eternal winter seems to be working well. I haven't found one area not below freezing. Yes, ma'am. Soon the ancient evils will begin to rise. Perfect. Then my dominion over this world will be complete. Huh, I don't know about this ancient evil thing, but if that means snow forever, I'm in. On day two, I ventured out from my hut to a nearby forest. There, I punched some trees and crafted a set of wooden tools. Next, I went underground and mined up plenty of cobblestone and coal to use for later. Not a bad start. Time to head home. As I was leaving the cave, I heard voices echoing in the distance, so I went to check it out. I discovered a villager and her daughter taking shelter. Mama, I'm cold. Can't the sun just come out? Any day now, dear. Surely any day now. But I'm so cold now. I know, baby. I know. Their conversation gave me an idea. I crept up to them, and when they were least expecting it... Oh! Stay out of my territory! After my fun, I upgraded my wooden pickaxe, axe, and shovel to stone. I had big plans for my shovel in particular. I went out and gathered tons and tons of snow. It was much easier now thanks to the eternal winter. So much so that my shovel broke almost immediately. I returned home and made tons of snow blocks which I use as a foundation for my hut. I plan to one day make it a giant snow castle. All for myself. Icy and quiet. Just how I like it. On day three, I went out to explore the new icy world the blizzard had brought. Wow, even the desert is frozen. Sweet. Just then, I was ambushed by a group of Everest crabs. I felt confident I could take these guys out, but they were a lot tougher than they looked. And I was only a baby. I used my ice powers, but it wasn't enough. I had to flee back to my home. Jeez, why is everything trying to kill me? Because you're the hero this world needs. I turned around and spotted a strange spirit at my doorway. Who are you? Leave before I eat ya! Max, I came to tell you that ancient evils are being awoken, and only a yeti can stop them from draining the world of life. Uh-huh. That sounds cool and all, but that's kind of a you problem. But I- uh... Bye! I turned around, and the spirit had teleported behind me. Stop that! The Frostmaw has already started action to take you out. Be careful, and take this. You're our only hope. The spirit gave me a strange frozen pork chop and vanished before my eyes. Huh. Well, at least I got something free. I was hungry anyways. I scarfed down the pork chop and suddenly transformed into an adult yeti. As an adult, I had 20 hearts and felt much stronger. <laughs> Not too bad. Thanks, tree stump guy. Before we get into our next day... Hey, viewer, have you heard of Dragon City? It's a free mobile game, and I've been obsessed with it lately. You can collect thousands of dragons with different elements to build your very own dragon empire. Reach new levels by collecting food, gold, and gems to grow and tailor your city. Hatch eggs and watch them transform from babies to full-grown dragons. Train and teach your dragons new attacks to take them into battle. I love training my dragons to destroy my opponents. I love that the game is available on all devices, so you can challenge your friends or other dragon masters in PvP combat fights. You can also join an alliance to interact with your friends and unlock more rewards. By joining the battle pass, you get weekly minigames to claim daily prizes and free dragons, including some that are your favorite YouTubers. If you click the link in the description or scan the QR code now, you can get a free starter pack of 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and a free Flame Knight Dragon. So download Dragon City and claim your special rewards today. Thanks Dragon City for sponsoring this video. On days four through seven, although I had my snack, I was still hungry. So I went looking for some real food. I traveled through the desolate landscape until finally finding a herd of sheep. I killed them for their mutton and also got a bit of wool in the process. Yummy in my tummy! Just then, the wizard from day one approached me from the brush. Hey, you're that guy who made an eternal winter. Thanks. I'm not your ally, Yeti. And the prophecies won't stop us from our plans. Whoa, chill. 
I don't care about that stuff. Lies! The wizard used his magic to summon a massive monster to attack me. But before I could do anything, the wizard ran off. The monster lunged forward and picked me up with his massive jaws. Back off, dude! I began to fight the beast, using my ice abilities and new strength. He was a tough foe that summoned mysterious plants that blinded me on contact. But I realized as an adult, I now had ice breath. With it, I could freeze my enemies in place. I overpowered the monster, winning me the battle. Upon his death, he dropped a map titled Trading Grounds, which I kept for myself. Well, that was rude. At least I have this map to check out later. On days 8 through 12, I returned to the mines and got to digging with my pickaxe. I found some iron, coal, and even a bit of diamond. It's my lucky day. I smelted my iron into ingots and used it to craft an iron pickaxe. Afterwards, I mined up the diamonds for safekeeping. On my way out, I heard the same family from earlier talking, so I snuck up on them again. They were both really cold, and I felt a bit off. Well, I could make them a fire or something. Hey! <coughs> Don't worry, I'm friendly. I heard you guys talking. You both seem to be really cold. If you want, you could come live at my base. I could give you guys some food and make a fire. That would be so wonderful. Thank you so much, kind Yeti. I took the family back to my base and added a room for them to stay. Once they were settled with a fire, I set off to find some more food. I found another herd of sheep and I killed them for their wool and meat. Afterwards, I returned home and made a furnace which I used to cook the mutton. I then set up and crafted their beds and cooked some more food on their fire. This is amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, kitty. I'm not a kitty. Good night. On days 13 through 15, I decided to follow the map I had received a couple of days ago. It led me to a field full of monsters in cages. What the? What is this? Down below, Ildris patrolled the cages. They were selling the monsters to each other. As a monster myself, I couldn't stand it. I decided to confront the Illagers. Hey, you guys, let these beasts go. An abominable snowman. Run! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go home and cry to your mommy. With the Illagers gone, I began to free the other monsters. Helping out these creatures felt good. I thought I preferred being alone, but maybe... Wow, thanks, man. I thought Yetis were jerks, but you seemed cool. Uh, thanks? We should hang out sometime. My name's Frosty. What's yours? Bye. Bye, huh? What an interesting name. My mom always told me I was the most special of all her snowflakes. I tried to just ignore the snow goal, but he was persistent. He followed me all the way home. And that's why I always pack an extra pair. Ah! Will you leave me alone? Oh, you're getting tired? Sorry. I'll come back tomorrow and see if we can hang out. Nice to meet you. Bye. Oh, man. Bye. That really is an interesting name. After hours of painful nagging from Frosty, he left. Tomorrow? I don't think I can take another day of this. On days 16 through 19, I woke up to find Frosty in my house. What in the world? How did you get in here? Door was unlocked, which is basically an invitation to come inside. I made you pancakes. Suddenly, the ground started to shake. One second, Frosty. I'll be right back. I left the base to see what was going on. I explored all around following the vibrations the best I could. After a bit of searching, I found the frost mob performing a strange ritual. What is she doing now? Ah, the little yeti that's been causing me trouble. You won't be able to much longer. The first of the ancient evils is about to drive. Like magic, a massive monster appeared from nowhere. And here he is to reclaim his realm. Not thinking straight, I began to fight it out with the giant beast. My attacks didn't seem to do anything. The monster was incredibly strong. Stronger than anything I've ever faced. He overpowered me in speed, strength, and even numbers. He spawned a massive army of withered skeletons to attack me. I tried my best, but I quickly realized I was no match for the ancient evil. I had to run. <laughs> this is only the first of many, little yeti. The other three will rise soon enough. There's gonna be more of these things? I'm gonna die. On days 20 through 23, I tried to think about ways to get more powerful, but I was getting frustrated. Ugh, why is this happening to me? Just then, the tree spirit from before appeared behind me. I see you've come face to face with the evil I've warned you of. You, what did you do? I just wanna live my life. I'm sorry, Max, it's merely destiny but I can't assist you in getting more strength. Travel to the center of the forest. There you will find another mythical creature like yourself who can help. The spirit vanished once again, leaving me with little options. 
Well, it's worth a shot at least. I traveled into the forest. It was deep and dark, and I was quickly missing my mountain. Surely I'm close. After a lot of traveling, I finally arrived at the center of the forest. There stood a giant mystical tree. Hello? Anyone out here? Just then, Bigfoot emerged in front of me. A Yeti? Are you the hero who will put a stop to the eternal winter? I'm afraid so, but I'm too weak. Can you help me? Yes, but it won't be easy. There is a village nearby being destroyed by the Big Bad's forces. Save them, and then I will train you. For sure, but first I need to prepare. On days 24 through 27, I returned to my base to find that more monsters had moved in. Who invited you? Frosty! He said he'd protect us from the eternal winter! Well, I guess I need to expand anyway. I began to build my hut up, adding a lot more rooms and a central reception area for the building. I also made sure to add some ice torches to brighten up and warm the place. So much for the castle. This feels more like a hotel now. Now that I had additional space, I figured it was time to prep for my mission from Bigfoot. I set off and went mining for a bit. There I found some more iron and coal. I returned home and cooked up some food as well as smelted my iron ore so I could craft some iron armor. Finally, I was ready for whatever was ahead. I went to leave, but as I stepped outside, I saw the young villager from before building a snowman. Wow, that looks pretty good. Thank you, kitty. You wanna make one with me? I guess. I spent a bit of time with her and built a snowman of my own. He's missing something. Here. The young villager topped him with a hat, completing the snowman family. With my building completed, I parted ways with the villager for my mission ahead. On days 28 through 31, I arrived at the village to find it ravaged by a group of weird monsters. All right, better get this over with. I charged into town, ready to take on the swarm with all my might. Ah, there's another monster. No, guys, I'm here to help. Okay, enough of this. I took out my Frostbringer and began to take them out. They tried to trap me in their webs and burn me down, but I was strong enough to break free. Although they outnumbered me, I was a Yeti, so they couldn't come close to my strength. I beat them down with my fists as well as my ice abilities and defeated the whole swarm. It'll take more than that to defeat me. Just then, their leader emerged before me. You flea bag! You'll regret what you did to my men. The ancient evils will rise again! The leader spat webs at me to try and slow me down. His size certainly wasn't just for show, but my time fighting the smaller ones gave me the edge I needed. Using the Frostbringer to my advantage, I hurled snowballs from afar. At one point, he managed to trap me, but I quickly busted out with my sword, proceeding to take him down. Aha! Take that! After the battle, the townspeople started cheering for me. They dropped me an Ice Dragon Bone Sword as a thank you gift. Oh! Thank you. At that moment, I felt pretty good about helping them, which was weird for me. I then went back to Bigfoot to tell him I completed the mission. Very good. Then are you ready for your training? Yes, sir. Then it starts now. On days 32 through 34, Bigfoot prepared me for my upcoming training. First, we will start with stealth training. But I'm a giant monster. That's impossible. Hey, man, I've been doing it for hundreds of years, and people still don't know for sure if I'm real. Touche. We began walking through the forest, trying to be as sneaky as possible. Remember, we're in a national park. People could pop out of anywhere. Keep your eyes peeled. Doesn't sound too hard, I guess. We continued to peruse around until we finally spotted a person. Quickly, hide. Ah! We waited until the coast was clear to continue moving along. But when we did, another person showed up. Ah! Ah! Is that a Yeti? Oh, I need to film this. Hurry, Max. He's pulling out a camera. Don't get caught. We ran away as quickly as possible to avoid being seen. We regrouped far enough away to get started with the next test. Good job, Max. You did well. Really? That didn't feel very stealthy to me. Don't be too hard on yourself. You did better than you think. Okay, cool. Thanks. What's next? We have one final test for today, and it's going to be tough. I can handle a challenge. What is it? We fight! Bigfoot began attacking me with all his strength. This was not the challenge I was expecting, but I fought back with everything I had. I used my Dragonbone Sword to slow him down as much as I could to get in some good blows. He would throw rocks at me and would send me flying with each hit he landed. Is that all you've got, Max? Is this you at your best? You're a tough monkey, I'll give you that. We continued to duke it out until finally I could fight no more. I was exhausted and Bigfoot had beat me. Sorry, Bigfoot, I failed you. Don't fret, Max. You shall improve with time. For now, take this. He dropped me an Everest helmet to help with any future battles I might face. 
It increased my already high frost damage. Thank you. On days 35 through 39, I decided to test out my new Everest helmet on some mobs. With the new power buff, my ice powers were able to shred them quickly. This is incredible. On the way back to my base, I took a detour to go mining. I gathered a lot more materials, including even more diamond. I used it to craft me some diamond armor for the battles ahead. After my upgrade, I returned home and found that the rooms I had made were already starting to fill up. This doesn't show any sign of stopping. Better expand more. I used the snow I had to continue the expansion of my base. I added another floor full of rooms as well as starting on an ice skating rink since the pool wasn't really viable in this weather. I filled a hole with water and left it to freeze. Hopefully that'll keep them busy for a while. After a lot of building, my hotel had seen a massive upgrade. Just then, Frosty walked up to me. Hey there, bye. Where have you been? I missed you. I've been busy. Busy with what? You're a Yeti. Hey, Yetis are more complicated than you think. We have layers. Like a cake? Everybody loves cake. Okay, I think this conversation is over. On days 40 through 42, a villager came up to me in a panic. Please, you have to help me. The earthquakes are destroying my village. And why are you asking me for help? You're the Yeti saving dozens of lives. Ugh. I guess I am doing that. Okay, I'll help. I followed the villager until he finally led me to a town with massive craters in the ground. What in the world? All of a sudden, the earth shook once again, causing the ground to fall right outside the village. As a result, a new crater formed, and the largest one by far. This has to be the Maw and her wizard. Before my eyes, a massive monster emerged from the hole. There was no doubt in my mind that that was in fact the second ancient evil. Ah, feels good to finally be awake again. Time to find some little ants to eat. She started to trample over villagers and destroy what was left of the tiny town. Come on, Yeti. Go do something. Yeah, that's a little above my pay grade. Please, my village. Fine. I walked up to the towering monster and confronted her. Uh, hey, giant. Is that a little snow monster? Yeah, it is. Leave these people alone. I won't allow it any longer. I took a heavy blow, which knocked me out instantly. Everything went black. On days 43 through 46, I woke up with a massive headache. Bigfoot was right in front of me. I was in his hideout. Bigfoot, dude, you saved my life. But how did you manage to get me out of there? What have I been trying to teach you? Stealth. We monsters should do everything we can to live our lives undetected. You know, that's what I always thought. But I don't know if I want to do that anymore. What are you talking about? You'll get yourself killed. Yeah, and if we don't do anything to stop the Eternal Winter, the Maw, and her ancient evils, everyone else is done for. Let me show you something. We ventured out of Bigfoot's hideout, where he led me to a random village. Okay, it's a village. What's so special about it? My brother had the same idea as you. Open himself up to others. One winter, he revealed himself to this village. Some accepted him, but many did not. One night, a crazed mob ambushed him, telling him how he was an abomination. They overpowered him and killed him. I'm so sorry to hear that. Just trust me, kid. A life of loneliness is the life for us. On days 47 through 50, I headed back home, reflecting on what Bigfoot had shown me. Are people really that bad? Just then, I spotted a house decorated for the holidays. I got a closer look inside, finding a family spending quality time together. They looked so happy. Oh, that's actually pretty sweet. The moment was cut short though. Krampus bursted through the back door, causing chaos within the home. Happy holidays! <laughs> I quickly busted in to confront the monster. Hey, Pipsqueak, how about you leave them alone? Krampus didn't listen, so I began to duke it out with him. Luckily for me, he was a joke. With my enhanced strength and powerful ice powers, I was able to take him out easy. Thank you so much, kind Yeti. Please stay over for dinner. You can even cut the roast. That sounds great, but I really need to get going. To further thank me, the family gave me a candy cane and a gingerbread house. Happy holidays. I headed back home even more confused than before. Do I want to live a life alone or surrounded by friends and family? On days 51 through 54, I returned to my base to find more people had moved in. Huh, I guess this is my life now? With this new community forming, I decided to spruce up my home to make it look more and more like a hotel. I added another story fit with eight more rooms for the new residents. I then made a small farm where I could put cows to feed the guests. I added one final touch and my Yeti hotel had once again been upgraded. After my expansion, a guest walked up to me saying they were hungry. 
Yo, got any food, big man? I'm not your maid, dude. Just then, the young villager approached to say she was also hungry. Oh, okay, I'll make a kitchen for everyone then. Thank you. Seriously, dude? As the guests requested, I started to build a cozy breakfast bar for all to enjoy. I assigned Frosty as the chef so he could make his favorite pancakes. When it was finished, I watched as everyone enjoyed the new food. As I looked around, I noticed I felt kinda nice about helping these people. Ah! Why can't I just hate everyone? Just then, the mother of the young villager walked up to me to hand me a letter that she received from a mysterious creature. Oh, thanks. It read, I can help you with your conflict, but first I need help with a monster. All right, no time to waste then. I ventured out to find this mysterious creature. On days 55 through 58, I followed the directions on the letter and arrived at a frozen lake. I looked around, but the place looked practically abandoned. Where is this guy? I continued to explore the lake and eventually found a gap where the ice had melted. Hello? Anyone down there? Suddenly, a sea monster breached the water and started to attack me. I began to shoot snowballs into the water below me. When the monster came in close, I whipped out my ice dragon bone sword and slashed away at the beast. I was able to freeze it for a moment, causing it to sink to the bottom. I took the opportunity to jump in after it and do some good damage with my ice attacks. However, when the monster was able to break free, it was incredibly fast. It darted around me and hit me at close range. After a fierce battle, I managed to slay it. Was this all a joke? Just as I was about to leave, another monster popped out from the melted ice. Ah! Oh, sorry to startle you, Max. Thanks for taking out that monster. They were causing trouble. How do you know me? I'm an old friend of Bigfoot. <laughs> My name's Nessie. I heard your plight and I can help. How so? Well, other creatures have their faults, but they're also very good. Allow me to show you the good in people and I can also make you stronger for your time. Well, if I can get stronger too, then I'm in. On days 59 through 62, Nessie took me to a father and son ice fishing. You see, humans are weak alone, but together they're strong. They care for one another and lift each other up. This is something we lack as monsters. But I'm so strong. I don't need anyone else to help me. You are strong, yes, but imagine how much more strength you'd have with a family on top of that. Nessie then took me to a pair of villagers, this time having a snowball fight. Why are they attacking each other? I thought they were a team. They're having fun. What's that? It's doing things together with other people just for the sake of being happy. Huh. I mean, that doesn't sound too bad, but how could I possibly trust anyone enough to do that? I think the answer's closer than you think. Come back tomorrow. With that, I started heading home. Once I got back to the hotel, some of my patrons were throwing me a party. Wait, what? Why would you all do this? Because we appreciate you. It's because you're all our family now. The party made me super happy. I thanked everyone and we all enjoyed the party. On days 63 through 66, after the party, I walked out feeling like something had changed in me. With that strange feeling came a new transformation. I grew into a massive Yeti. With my new size, I now had 40 hearts. Whoa, this must be the power Nessie told me about. I better head back and tell her. I quickly returned to Nessie's lake and told her everything about what happened. I'm so proud of you, Max. You've progressed so much in just a few days. Our excitement was short-lived, however, as the ground shook violently below us. Oh no, not again! Just then, the third ancient evil shot from the water below, critically wounding Nessie. She swam down to the bottom of the lake to hide, but my rage overcame me. You monster! I rushed blindly to battle, but the beast was incredibly powerful. I tried to avoid the freezing water and continue battling with my ice powers from afar. I was able to fend it off longer than any other evil thus far, but I was still getting overpowered. Luckily, I had an idea. Hey, ugly! Come and get me! I shot ice balls into the distance, causing the monster to get distracted and swim in their direction. With the monster gone, Nessie returned to the surface. Nessie, are you okay? You must keep training. You're so close. Please save the realm before the fourth evil awakes. What happens if all four return? Unspeakable damage. The world can be trapped in eternal winter forever. I helplessly watched as Nessie died. No! On days 67 through 70, I returned to Bigfoot's tree as fast as I could to warn him about what had happened. Max, thank goodness you're here. I heard the third ancient evil arrive. I know. They killed Nessie. Nessie? Wait, you look different. What did she do? Nessie showed me the power of friends and family. People don't just drag you down. They're able to lift you up too. 
You fool! That'll only get you killed! And a hotel? What are you thinking? Nobody has hurt me! Nobody has hurt you yet! I can't work with a traitor! Leave! But... Leave! Bigfoot attacked me, the same way he had from our training before. He threw rocks at me from afar, and each of his hits sent me flying into the sky. However, I have grown much stronger since our last spar. I used my ice abilities to keep him in place and land my own powerful attacks. Please! I don't want to fight! You've come a long way, but you will come to your senses soon. You're no longer welcome here. I left, feeling more lost now than ever. I wasn't sure where else I could turn. On days 71 through 74, to get my mind off of my fight with Bigfoot, I expanded the hotel. Now that I was huge, it was harder to navigate the base. To help this, I added another level with a lot of space. I built a common area with chairs, couches, and a campfire. After a lot of building, the young villager's mom walked up to me. I heard there are now three ancient evils. Can you stop it? I want to, but I can't. I'm too weak. People and creatures far and wide live here. Why not ask for help? Surely they can offer you wisdom. It's the least any of us could do. I didn't think of that. Good idea. I went around the hotel asking if anyone had any tools or tips to teach me. One person showed me how to use special boots in battle, allowing me to dash at quick speeds. Sick! Another resident showed me how to use an iron snow shovel, which would be super useful in expanding the hotel further. I continued to look for people to help train me when Frosty walked up. Hey, bye. I heard you need help getting stronger. Yeah, but baking a cake isn't gonna help me. <laughs> You're so funny, but I do have this. He then tossed me a map titled Ice Cream World. Interesting. This might be worth checking out. Thanks. On days 75 through 77, I followed the map to Ice Cream World. After a bit of traveling, I arrived at a sugary sweet, multicolored landscape. Everything was ice cream. Whoa, this is beautiful. I explored the strange biome and all the magic that was inside it. I also ate a lot of ice cream. Yum, yum, in my tum, tum. Why do I say the things that I say? I continued to look around, finding a strange altar surrounded by ice cream. I approached it, and a freaky cherry monster walked outside. All I wanted to do was eat ice cream! I had no choice but to fight the monster. It charged at me with great speed and tried to beat me down up close. However, that was about all it could do. I definitely was smarter than this guy. I used my ice dragon bone sword to freeze him in place, allowing me to beat him down to size. Using my strength as a yeti, I took down the creature. Well, there goes the cherry on top. After the fight, I approached the altar, finding a ton of different desserts in a chest. Sweet! On day 78 through 81, I returned home to find a note at my door. It was from the Ice Wizard. Your dear young villager is in my clutches. Better hurry, the ancient evils are so hungry. Oh no, I have to save her. I left the base as quickly as I could. After a lot of traveling, I found a huge ice palace with the wizard and young villager inside. Ah, the ugly Yeti has finally come out from hiding. Let her go! She's just a kid! You wish. You've been a thorn in me and the Frostmars' side since day one. The prophecy will not come true. I'll make sure of it. The fight with the Ice Wizard began. He conjured icicles from the sky that crashed down onto me, dealing massive damage. He also was able to summon blizzards that sucked me in closer to his attacks. However, I was an incredibly powerful yeti, so my fist packed a punch too. Whenever he dragged me close, I used my raw strength to beat him up. What's wrong, yeti? Are you starting to get cold. Ha! I'm still warming up. I used my ice dragon bone sword in quick tandem and took him down. Upon his death, he dropped the map to the first ancient evil. Wow, I've gotten a lot stronger. Maybe even strong enough to take on this huge monster. I then quickly freed the young villager from the cage. Yay, thank you. Of course, let's go home. On days 82 through 85, I reunited the young villager with her mom. After that, I decided I wanted to expand the hotel some more. I added another level, again accounting for my big size, and made a couple of VIP hotel rooms. I added some finishing touches, completing my Yeti Hotel. This place is so dang cool. Later, I realized that the ancient beasts cannot continue to roam as they are. I prepared for battle, gathering food and crafting some new armor. I guess I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Just then, Frosty walked up to me. Hey, bye. I want to introduce you to my brother, Chet. Sup, bruh. Oh, hi. Chet's super great at making potions, aren't you, bro? Yeah, bruh. My potions are straight litty. No cap. I can make you something if you can kill the ancient evils. Bring me back their essence, and I'll brew you a potion strong enough to take on the ma. You got yourself a deal. With that, I set off to face one of the ancient evils. On days 86 through 88, I followed the map I got from the Ice Wizard and arrived at the first ancient evil. All right, Max. It's time to show them how much stronger you are now. Just then, the ancient evil noticed me. Oh, are you the little yeti from when I woke up? You're as cute as a poodle. 
Too bad this poodle has horns, stinky. I ran it fast, taking the beast by surprise and allowing me to get the first hit. The battle was intense right from the start. He definitely wasn't called the ancient evil for nothing. He had incredible strength, just like day one. He could still blind me. Unfortunately for him, I was stronger now. I see the doggy can bite now, but that's not all I have up my sleeve. He summoned his army of wither skeletons again, but with my Everest helmet, I had the strength boost I needed to shred through the army faster than before. My skeletons. Not so scary now. I bombarded the monster with my ice powers, as well as my ice dragon bone sword to keep him as stationary as possible. Finally, I landed the final blow and slayed the first of the ancient evils. Afterwards, I quickly eliminated the rest of his skeletons. Heck yeah! Upon his death, he dropped the essence that Chet told me about. I picked it up for safekeeping. Better get this to Chet. On days 89 through 92, I returned to my base and gave the essence I got to Chet. Lit fam, keep gathering that essence and I'll get this potion ready for you. Sounds good. I took the opportunity to relax for a moment when all of a sudden the young villager approached me. Hi kitty. Hi little one. Wanna have a snowball fight? I remember how Nessie told me this was something humans and villagers did for fun. If I was gonna keep learning from others, I might as well try it out. Sure, kid. Me and the young villager had a snowball fight outside the hotel, and it was actually a lot of fun. <laughs> now I know what Nessie meant. Once we finished our snowball fight, I went to check on Chet again to see how the potion was going. Sad, bruh. My work is done for now. Get me the other ancient essences, and we'll be good. Perfect. Suddenly, I heard a massive roar in the distance. I quickly left the hotel to find the second ancient evil attacking not too far from here. I need to kill all of these monsters before they hurt my friends. On days 93 through 95, I approach the second ancient evil, ready to finally take her down. Hey, I'm sick of all you evils causing chaos in the overworld. Are you sure about that? We're the ones who will keep the winter eternal. Never again will you be stuck to one bio. I don't care about that anymore. My friends are dying in the cold. A yeti with friends? <laughs> Let's get over this, little one. I began to fire my ice attacks from afar, but I wasn't the only one who had range. The ancient monster was able to fire huge explosive attacks at me. I was sure to keep my distance from the hotel so she couldn't harm anyone inside. No! This can't be! Your days of destruction are over! I mustered up all my courage and jumped in close to the monster, landing the killing blow. Upon their death, she dropped her ancient essence, as well as an ancient bow and arrows. This will definitely be useful for the final evil. I decided before jumping into my final battle, I would need to prepare first. I stopped by Frosty's and packed up a load of pancakes. Good luck, bye. <laughs> Call me Max. Time to go kill the next ancient evil. On days 96 through 98, I arrived at some strange ice arena. What's all this? Mm, you are oozing with strength and determination. Aren't you? You don't seem too worried about being defeated. Only curious. <laughs> I see you've been busy eliminating the other titans. Then you should know I'm not someone to mess with. I know that the others were weak. I'm going to enjoy killing you and the rest of your little friends. <laughs> touch my friends. Ah! I hurled myself towards him and the fight began. I tried to get in close with my sword, but he was too powerful. I retreated to the shore and began to fire an onslaught of arrows instead. This proved far more effective than close combat. I slowly chipped away at him, trying my best to avoid his massive jaws. After a lot of hard work and resilience, I took down the monster. I did it! Upon their death, they dropped the third ancient essence. Well, would you look at this? Thanks for the prize, big guy. Okay. That leaves me with only one more ancient evil to stop. Let's just hope I can find the maw before it's summoned. On day 99, I returned home to give Chet the final essences to complete the powerful potion. Nice, dude. This'll finish up the brewing process for sure. Give me a sec. Here you go, bruh. One super excellent potion for slaying bad guys. Good luck. I took the potion and drank it immediately. It bumped me up to a total of 70 hearts and gave me a ton more strength. Wow, I feel strong. Just then, I heard a voice coming from the front entrance. Hello, Max. Bigfoot? I jumped to the bottom floor to see what was up. Hey, what are you doing here? Max, I wanted to apologize for what I said. It was out of line. Oh. I've been watching you, and I've seen all the friends you've made and helped to get to this point. It's quite amazing. Thanks, Bigfoot. That means a lot. Cutting our conversation short, the ground started to shake again. The mom must be trying to summon the fourth ancient evil. Sorry, Bigfoot. I gotta go. You got this, Max. 
We're all counting on you. See you on the other side. I promptly left, not knowing if that would be the last time I see all of my friends. On day 100, I followed the rumbling earthquakes to hopefully discover where the Maw was located. The quakes became much stronger as I traveled, and after much searching, I came across the final ritual. Stop right there! Ah, if it isn't the little yeti who's been stirring up trouble. All of your efforts will soon be for naught. Soon, the fourth evil will rise and bring eternal winter with it! Not on my watch. You're going down. The Maw let out a vicious roar and the final battle commenced. She was an incredibly skilled Frostmancer and had ice breath that would freeze me in place. Once she was able to get in close, she would hit me with an ice enhanced punch that did massive damage. Luckily, I had a ton of hearts, so I could take a hit or two. I used my own ice abilities to hurl snowballs at her from afar, but it wasn't getting me where I needed. I ran in close, being careful not to get hit by her powerful fists. You may look tough, but you're no match for me. That's right, I'm better. I chipped away at her with my ice dragon bone sword and thanks to Chet's potion, I had just enough strength to go in for the final hit, slaying the maw and freeing the world from eternal winter. That's why you don't mess with a Yeti. Thanks again, Dragon City, for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code to play Dragon City and claim your prizes now.